Alarm 10, or A, on the Alpha I power supply indicates a failure of the external cooling fan mounted on the heat sink. When the power supply faults out for a bad external fan, the system does its best to get your attention. The power supply doesn't have direct communication with the CNC like the spindle and servo amplifiers do, but the power supply, or PSM, power supply module, does talk to those units. So when the PSM has a bad fan, it tells the spindle and servo amps, and they all let the CNC know. The fan failure on the PSM is reported in two stages. When it first detects a fan problem, the PSM goes into a warning state, and if the fan issue hasn't self-corrected within one minute, it goes into an alarm state. While the PSM is in a fan warning state, the spindle and servo amps will report that they are also. Alarm DS611 is generated by the CNC when it detects that a servo amp is in the warning state. In parentheses, the alarm will indicate the axis that the amplifier controls. You will get an alarm for every axis that is fed by the offending power supply. The spindle amplifier will cause the word fan to flash in the status bar. If you have alarms occurring at the same time, you'll just see ALM flash. While the power supply is in the warning state, the servo amplifiers are still powered up and able to move the machine around. After one minute, the PSM moves into the alarm state and stops working. The servo amplifiers tell the CNC they're not going to work either, and the CNC displays an SV606 alarm to pass the message to you. The spindle amplifier also sends word that it's taking a break by displaying an SP9113 alarm. There's nothing wrong with the servos or spindle. The alarms are to let you know that the power supply has a problem. Once the system has reached this point, all the drives become not ready and the machine will not be able to move. The amplifier units tend to look alike, so it's not a bad idea to access the electronics cabinet with power on, please do it safely, and look at the status displays of the units while the alarm is occurring. What you should expect to see is dashes on the servo amplifiers, a B3 on the spindle amplifier, and either an A or 10 on the power supply. The B3 on the spindle amp doesn't mean the spindle has a problem, it just means that the PSM doesn't talk to the CNC, so the spindle triggers an alarm any time the power supply does in order to let you know. Let's define safely. The motor amplifiers are in the electrical cabinet, and opening the cabinet with power applied potentially exposes you to danger. In order to accurately troubleshoot the exact cause of this alarm, you will need to have power applied to the equipment. Don't attempt to perform anything discussed in this presentation if you are not both fully qualified to do so and have the equipment owner's permission to do so. Once you are done troubleshooting and before performing any maintenance, follow all plant safety and lockout procedures. These procedures should include releasing all energies related to the maintenance procedure performed. How come Mr. Fanic Video Guy can't figure out if my power supply will have an A or a 10 on it? A and 10 are really the same thing. It just depends on how much room the power supply has available to show you what the alarm is. And that depends on which power supply you have. If the power supply only has a single seven segment display, it will display an A for a bad external fan. If the power supply has two seven segment displays, then it will display a 10 for a bad external fan. The fan is physically mounted on top of the radiator slash heatsink. The heatsink is mounted on the back of the power supply and goes through the wall that it's mounted on. On some machines, you might be able to look down from the top of the machine and see the backside of the amplifiers, but let's just assume you can't see the fan without removing something. Unlike the internal fan, you will need some tools. The one tool you will definitely need is a screwdriver. Do yourself a favor and make sure it is a Japanese industrial standard tipped screwdriver. At a quick glance, JIS and Philips appear to be the same, but a close look reveals that their design is slightly divergent. This difference makes it easy for Philips screwdrivers to strip out JIS screw heads when they are screwed in tight. Conveniently, JIS tips work great in Philips, so if you've noticed problems with stripping out screws when working on Asian-built equipment, you might want to consider changing out your Philips screwdrivers for Japanese industrial standard versions. 
Before we down the machine completely, let's talk about moving it. While the DS611 alarm is displayed, the machine is still technically able to move. However, if you need to move the machine using an automatic operation, it won't happen because there is an alarm. Parameter 1807, bit 2, set to a 1, will prevent the DS611 alarm from ever occurring. The power supply will still go into a warning state for one minute, and then the alarm state, you just won't have any indication of the warning state on the screen. If you've got a bad power supply, set 1807 bit 2 equal to 1, cycle the power to clear the alarm, and then when you power up the machine, you will have a minute to move while in the warning state. Once the power supply switches to the alarm state, you will get an alarm on the screen again. Power down and power up as necessary to get the machine where you need it. The latest series of amplifiers have a diagnostic that shows you the fan speed. Since the PSM doesn't talk directly with the CNC, the diagnostics for the power supply's fan speed actually come from the servo and or spindle modules. You may ask, why does it come from both? It boils down to there being some installations where you have a power supply hooked up to servo amps without a spindle amp, or to a spindle amp, but not servos. No matter what the PSM is working with, it is able to let you know it has a problem. CNC Diagnostics 1720, 1721, 1732, and 1733 Report the RPM reading of the power supply external fan. 1720 and 1721 are from the servo amplifiers. 1732 and 33 are from the spindle amplifier, or ERS if you have multiple. If the power supply only has one fan, only two of those four diagnostics will register a reading. The other two diagnostics are for power supply units that have two fans on their heatsink. If you don't have those diagnostics on your CNC, it just means your amplifiers are older models. Another handy feature of newer drives relates to this external fan that you need to get to. Previously, the power supply had to be removed to access the external fan. Newer models can remove the fan without removing the whole unit. To determine which amplifier you have, first remove the internal fan. The internal cooling fan and its housing lift right off of the top. In order to get the housing out, you must squeeze these two tabs to release it. Now that the internal fan is out of the way, look at the back wall of the power supply through the hole that removing the internal fan created. You might have to get a little creative by taking a picture if there isn't room for you to see. If all you see is yellow plastic on the back wall, a spot for your finger to hook onto, and a ramp to slide the fan out on, Good news! No need to pull the power supply out. If the back wall looks like bare aluminum and you can see all the components inside of the power supply, you'll need to uninstall the power supply to get to the external fan. Depending on the size of the unit, there are one or two screws at the top and the bottom holding it to the wall. To remove the external fan without uninstalling the power supply, loosen the screws that are shrouded in plastic. The screws are captive, so don't expect them to come out completely. Screws on top can be reached from above the power supply. Screws on the bottom are reached through the front wall of the power supply. Look for the access hole between the DC link bus bars. Here's a handy dandy tip. There is an LED between the bus bars. If the LED is lit, it means that there is voltage waiting to greet you if you place a metallic object between the bus bars. Make sure the DC link is entirely discharged before trying to get the fan out. Once the screws for the fan are loose, grip the plastic loop and pull toward the front of the power supply. The external fan will slide out through the inside of the unit. Once you have the fan out, there are a few things that you can check for. Is the fan physically blocked or filthy? Cleaning it up may fix it. Try to reseat the fan modules. Maybe it's a bad connection. The signals for the external fan rely on the internal fan because it connects to both the external fan and the logic board. The logic board on the front of the amp that has all the connectors plugging into it is removable. Try to reseat it. If it's still not working, it looks like it's time to break out the credit card. You probably need a fan. Replace it. It's not likely, but if you replace the fan and it still doesn't work, you can look into it being a bad logic board or power supply. If you have other power supplies, see if they have the same logic board by verifying the part numbers. 
If you're comfortable, try swapping the boards to verify the logic board is the issue, or just replace the power supply. The fan and the metal plate it is mounted on are two separate parts. The part number of the fan will probably start with A90L, and chances are good the part number is printed on the fan. If it isn't, contact our part sales department, give them the part number of your power supply. It's that AO6B number on the label at the top of the unit, and they'll find it for you. We're here to help whenever you need it. Just call 888-326-8287, press 2 for CNC, and then press 2 for technical support. To reach the part sales department, press 2 for CNC, then 1 and 1 again. Thanks for watching. Thank you.